Every parent has high hopes for their little child. My parents were no different. They wanted me to be a doctor, but I disagreed. Instead of medicine, my field is now biomedical engineering. When I was 13, I saw my dear grandfather became paralyzed. He could only blink to communicate. It was so hard. All I wanted to be able to do was to read his mind, to know his needs. Was he hot? Cold? Was he comfortable? What was he feeling? Years later, I enrolled at Bragg University in Dhaka, Bangladesh in electronics and communication engineering. During the end of my bachelor's degree, I was asked to submit a research proposal. I thought about my grandfather and his inability to communicate and thought of using my experience as a communication engineer to interpret into brain signals. This would help people who were paralyzed, like my grandfather. Since then, from 2008, I began exploring the beautiful world of biomedical engineering. I remembered what I had said to my parents. Why do I need to be a doctor and treat illness? when I can do research and prevent illness in the very first place. Who knows, maybe even eliminate cancer. Now I'm doing PhD on nuclear medicine imaging to detect cancer at its very earliest stage. When I had to choose where to go for the PhD, I could go to the United States or maybe Canada or Australia. I chose Australia. I chose Australia for the very best reason of all. You play cricket. <laughs> I love the people I work with, but also when I'm here, away from my Bangladeshi cricket heroes, Mashafi, Shakib or Tamim. I thought I can be here with my childhood crush, Brett Lee. <laughs> I thought Brett is going to embrace me whenever I arrive in Australia. Well, it didn't happen at all. But after my arrival here in Australia on 2013, nothing makes me happier than seeing people everywhere playing cricket. And in 2015, I followed my favorite Bangladeshi cricket team from Manuka Oval to the MCG as they played the World Cup. My world is perfect. <laughs> I'm here in a nation of cricketers doing research on the thing that matters most of all. My discussion with you today is about cancer, probably the most frightening disease a person can ever hear. Who doesn't know someone? A friend, a family member, a workmate who has joined the cancer club? People with cancer often say, this is the club they did not ever wish to join. Normally, in our body, cells grow and multiply in a controlled way. However, if something causes a mistake to occur in the cell's genetic blueprint, this control can be lost. Here you can see the difference between the normal cells and abnormal cells. 
Have you ever thought about the most common cancers worldwide? Let me tell you. According to 2012, lung cancer was the most common cancer worldwide, contributing 13% of the total number of new cases diagnosed. Breast cancer was the second most common cancer, with nearly 1.7 million new cases in 2012. Where colorectal cancer was the third most common cancer, with nearly 1.4 million new cases in 2012 as well. In Australia, one in two men and one in three women will be diagnosed with cancer by the age of 85. Three in every 10 Australians die because of cancer. Where every year around the world, eight million people die. There were an estimated 14.1 million new cancer cases in 2012, and this number is expected to increase to 24 million by 2035. Cancer is a dreaded disease. It often has no specific symptoms. Whenever it is diagnosed, it doesn't get detected at stage one or two. After a few years, when it is diagnosed again, it can often be found at a stage three or stage four, which means very limited prospects for treatment. Stages are extremely important to know while diagnosing. There are four different types of stages based on the spread of cancer cells. The very initial stage is stage zero, where the cancer cells are still in the place where they started and have not spread at all. In stage one, it is small and has spread a little. But in stage two or three, it is larger and has spread into nearby tissues. Whereas the very last stage, stage four, means it is larger and has spread other areas of the body. We often think cancer is incurable. But I say cancer is curable if detected early. In fact, early detection is the only current option to substantially reduce the deaths from cancer. But the major reason for the huge loss we face every year is failure to detect cancer at its earliest stage. Now, is there any technology which actually can detect cancer at its very initial stage? Well, you must be thinking that yes, there are current cancer detection technologies like CT or MRI. However, they cannot detect cancer at its very earliest stage. Cancer is so tiny at this stage, it's like trying to find a grain of sand in an Olympic swimming pool, or like trying to find Bradley in a satellite picture of India. <laughs> so what is the solution? For what is that technology that can detect cancer at its very initial stage? That is nuclear medicine imaging. But just like any other thing, life is not that fair. Neither nuclear medicine is. It has its own limitations. My research focuses on those limitations to overcome. Single photon emission computer tomography, or SPECT, is a technique of imaging in nuclear medicine. It uses radioisotope, which is injected to the patient, and that gets mixed with the bloodstream and starts emitting rays inside of the human body. Those emitted rays are collected by a SPECT scanner to produce functional images. You must be thinking how a SPECT is very important. In fact, SPECT is important for several reasons. While other imaging devices, like X-rays, can show what are the structure of your organs look like, 
a spect scan can show how your organs work. In fact, a spect scan can show how the blood flows to your heart or which part of your brain is more active or less active. Here, you can see a full body spect scan. Various ranges of color contrast show the different range of activity of your brain. You already know, SPECT can detect cancer, but not only that, SPECT can detect return of cancer as well. One of the most important issues while we go for diagnosis is whether the results will be accurate or not. Let me tell you, the accuracy rate of a SPECT is remarkable, which is around 85 to 94% whereas other medical imaging devices has the accuracy rate around 70%. Most importantly, SPECT exposes to patients only a low level of radiation. Now you think it should be the technology everywhere, right? But SPECT has its own limitations. That is what I and my colleagues are now working. A conventional SPECT uses a conventional collimeter, which allows rays only in a particular direction. Rest of the rays are discarded. That makes SPECT very low in acquisition and causes poor resolution images. So we often need to fuse it with other technologies to describe its own images. That makes the technology expensive. Of course, people have tried to develop SPECT further. They have come up approaches which can improve sensitivity but fail to improve resolution, whereas others have failed to give birth. Most of the approaches are limited for small animal imaging only, and there is still no suitable approach for patient study. We thought of improving this imaging technology such a way that can give not only good sensitivity, but also good resolution. We have come up SPECT based on light field imaging method. Light field imaging method allows SPECT to put a microlens array in, in front of the imaging sensor and see images from thousands of different angles. We are designing a detector module which has quite a small active area and which has 10,000 pinholes in total, which can allow every possible ray from every possible direction. That makes the acquisition high. Because of this higher acquisition, LSPECT can collect sufficient data in a short period of time. So, LSPECT will no longer need any other technology to describe its own images. That makes the technology cheaper. We have our LSPECT system in the laboratory, but I needed to test it further. I said to my supervisor, I need to test it. I might grab a human being, maybe one of you and make you drunk with the radiation. And then my supervisor said, yes. That's the best possible way to go to the prison. <laughs> so I couldn't actually do that. I had to start with a Monte Carlo simulation tool, which can perform realistic environment spec. Here is our Monte Carlo model of LSPECT system. It can be changed to suit based on the organ size and the shape. And it can be in different number of heads. Here, you can see a demonstration of LSPECT system. And you can see how the emission is captured by the scanner heads around the object. While existing SPECT imaging systems gives the sensitivity range into 100, our LSPECT system is giving it into thousands. While other existing SPECT imaging systems is giving resolution in several millimeters, 
our LSPIC system is giving it below one millimeter. We are at the initial stage of our development, but we believe LSPIC has the potential to revolutionize the approach to detect cancer at its very initial stage. The system we are developing will not only help to improve the lives of the people who need treatment for cancer, but we can detect and prevent cancer all together. One of Australia's most radical cancer surgeons is Dr. Charlie Teo. He takes on surgery on those patients who you might call are in the two hard baskets. He dares to operate his cancer patients based on their disparate wishes. He is known as the surgeons of last resort. He says his mission is to give his patients hope. And as biomedical engineers, we are also providing hope in a very particular and specific way, not only to the people, but also to the medical science. Imagine if one day this medical world could say, we have beaten cancer. We can diagnose it in a, list, in a stage where we are capable to destroy the cancer cells and its any surrounding tissues. My wish will then be fulfilled to prevent rather than cure. Life comes as choices, where our healthcare system chose to devote more in wellness and in treatments. I chose myself to devote more in the prevention of cancer. Choices are not right or wrong. It's your passion, patience, courage, and most importantly, it's your dream that makes it right. Today, I ask you to escape from a moment of your life and choose that particular dream you want to live with your entire life. For me, I do dream for a world, a world free of cancer, and I believe in near future, Elspect will be the reason for you to dream the same.